three miles up and three miles down. To be honest, I think I'd dread the three miles down more than the three miles up. What with shin splints and all. I don't think I'd make a very good paratrooper. I like moaning too much for a start. From the rigorous training to the whole jumping out of an aircraft from several hundred feet whilst under fire from the enemy, knowing that you could easily land in a swamp, fire or enemy gun emplacement. That's why these guys were some of the best soldiers in the Allied Army. Welcome to today's video, where I paint a US paratrooper themed around 1944. I saw that I had a few Artisan Designs 28mm miniatures left over from a painting project a few years back and saw that I had this US Airborne miniature whilst rummaging around my collection. I think I've mentioned before um, this in a previous video, but Artisan Designs in my opinion make some of the best World War II miniatures out there. Loads of detail, especially in the faces and expressions. Also the weapons too. It just makes the painting a process so much more enjoyable. Well, what hasn't been said about the US Airborne divisions? The accounts from Easy Company of the 101st Airborne, well depicted in Stephen Ambrose's book and the Band of Brothers miniseries. But it was the 82nd Airborne that foresaw combat first in Sicily and Salerno in 1943, giving them considerable battle experience prior to the invasion in 1944. The US 82nd and 101st Airborne Divisions, as we all know, played a pivotal role in the Normandy campaign. And given that we are upon the 79th anniversary of the campaign following D-Day, it seems appropriate to cover this period of history. Incidentally, this miniature is wearing the iconic M1942 jumpsuit, which was discontinued by the end of the campaign in August. By this point, at the end of the Normandy campaign, these uniforms were old rags and the US uniforms were becoming more standardised. The task of the two American airborne divisions, parachute and glider infantry, was to secure the right flank of the invasion forces and to support the mission to take, retake Cherbourg, which would offer the Allies a natural supply port, which they deemed fundamental in order to keep the Allied war machine running. Their initial tasks were to protect the beaches and to capture the town of Carantan, which would assist the linking up of the Utah and Omaha beach. As with any best laid plans, it can all have fallen apart upon contact with the enemy, and it did. Many of the drop zones were missed and paratroopers were scattered all around the Normandy countryside. However, this did work both ways and the Germans were confused by the landings as it was nearly impossible to manage pockets of highly trained paratroopers popping up from anywhere and everywhere. It took several days for the 101st to take the key town of Carantan, their first taste of urban fighting, as it was defended by well-trained German troops including 6th Fallschirmjäger Regiment. Again, this is very famously portrayed in the Band of Brothers show. The 101st and 82nd would go on to fight in Operation Market Garden, and the 17th Airborne would take part in the later parts of the war, such as the Battle of the Bulge and Operation Varsity. Here I paint on the 101st Airborne badge on the left arm. I start by painting the background in black and then a sort of white reverse C letter shape on it with some yellow dots to represent the writing and the beak. In wargaming terms, these troops will be considered elite or top tier generally. They were well trained and equally important, highly motivated soldiers. So they'll cost more points when it comes to building your army list, and rightly so. 
Given that they were jumping out of aircraft behind enemy lines, paratroopers were lightly armed. The glider regiments that followed had slightly heavier kit and even light artillery pieces. But essentially the role of the Airborne Infantry Division, in a nutshell, is to take and hold an objective until the armour and infantry divisions can relieve them. And that is why their training and discipline was so critical. So maybe your Flames of War army list could include a single platoon of paratroopers, supported by a formation of Sherman tanks representing the 2nd armour, fighting alongside the 101st, or perhaps a small five-man squad from the 82nd supporting a platoon from the 4th Infantry Division, giving an elite element to your bolt action list, which might be easier on the points. As I mentioned earlier, the uniforms did change, and this is worth bearing in mind when you purchase your models. The plastic 28mm kit from Warlord Games depicts the later uniforms from Market Garden onwards, but I'm pretty sure they have some metal figures from the earlier period as well. The big clue is the green patches on the knees and elbows, but you can always paint your Warlords in the 1942 variant for Normandy. You do you, paint them how you like. We finish the model by applying some highlights to the flesh and then the basing using texture paint from Vallejo, followed by some soil from Nanny Sue's back garden. And that's it. I hope you found this video fun. I'll add some pictures at the end. Thank you so much for your support and feedback to the channel so far. I'm really enjoying the journey and I've got some cool ideas moving forward for more content. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel or supporting me on Patreon. Until the next one though, take care.